Good morning and welcome everyone to the course on uh, prophetic ministry. We'll pray and we'll begin. I want to uh, request someone from the online batch to lead in prayer, if possible. Kindly unmute and pray, please. Mm -hmm. I'll pray. Okay, uh, Ram, Ravli, just a moment. Sorry to bother you. Okay. Yeah. Please, Ravli, go ahead. There was. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you for uh, gathering us together for class again. Uh, we just pray, Father God, during this uh, 15 minutes of class. Uh, you you talk to us, talk to each one of us, uh, what you plan through. Uh, Pastor Nancy, we pray God that uh, uh, everything with, that we learn, we pray God that your wisdom will be upon us and uh, we will be able to uh, walk into the things that you have planned for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ravli. Um, let's begin. We were talking about the power of the prophetic word in the last class and we saw that uh, there are many expressions of the prophetic it need not only be the spoken word but it could be an artistic expression it could be um, an intercession okay so uh, the prophetic can come forth in various ways and uh, we just must allow it to be released the way um, it is most excuse me, most effective. But uh, what we also said is that there is power in the release of the prophetic. So that is what is uh, the key thing. And then we were looking at all the uh, different outcomes or the impact that the prophetic makes. So I'll just review that quickly because um, It'll just help us. So we said that the prophetic word will edify, exhort, comfort. And that we've talked about it in detail. We also said that the prophetic word will reveal one's true character and potential. So what a person is able to do, uh, the kind of heart that they carry is uh, possible for us to assess through a prophetic word. When God speaks and says, you are like this, you are going to do these things. So the potential of that person, the heart of that person is quite evident. We also saw how someone's uh, destiny or the plans and purposes of God for a person can also be revealed where God says, you're going to do this or um, I'm calling you into the teaching ministry. So that is God's plan. According to God's plan, um, the person can then prepare themselves, they can begin to make decisions Okay, in line with the purpose of God. We saw how Zacharias, he prayed for his son. Uh, while he was still a baby, it was possible to release words uh, aligned to the purpose for that, for that child. But when it comes to fulfilling the purpose that God has for us, we should not always depend on the prophetic word. Sometimes we just run behind prophetic word. Unless we get a prophetic word, I won't take up a job. Unless I get a prophetic word, you know, I won't construct a house. So we fully depend on the prophetic word. That should not be the way we approach the prophetic word. Because we as believers have the Holy Spirit in us. So we are led by the Spirit of God. And uh, even Jesus in John 16, he said that the Spirit, when he comes, he will guide you into all things. Uh, he will glorify me. He will teach you the things you know that are uh, from my heart. So we depend on the leading of the Holy Spirit. But sometimes God can give us, we call it a bonus, right? A prophetic word comes. So that strengthens us, that confirms what God wants to do in our lives. So these are things that we have seen. The prophetic word can also stir up and release faith for the miraculous. Uh, sometimes we hear a word, it may carry an instruction or it may again talk of the purpose of God, right? So when that happens, uh, we feel 
I mean, in, in a spiritual sense, it's not just a feeling, but there is faith. Time and again, for example, if, if God says, okay, I am going to establish you in this career and uh, you're just not getting a job, what, what would be the state of our hearts if we are a believing person? We'll be very strong because the word has already come. God's word cannot be uh, wrong. God always speaks the truth. So if there is a prophetic word that says, I'm going to establish you in this area, we are so strong, even when times are tough. So the prophetic word has the strength to stir up and release faith for, for us to move forward with the plans of God. So miracles also can take place. We've seen that in the case of Elijah, Elisha, and uh, their ministries. Now, the prophetic word motivates, brings strength to carry out the plans and purposes of God. This is where we were at. Last time we stopped over here. So I'll pick up from here. This is uh, page 83 in the PDF version. All right. Uh, so for all of us in our journey, there will be times where we encounter a challenge or we encounter some form of a delay uh, or something else that happens. Now, our natural response is, you know, feeling slow, feeling discouraged, feeling lethargic. That might happen. But you see, there are times when God releases a prophetic word to bring motivation and strength in those moments where we may be down. And we've seen this happen in scripture. There is a particular uh, incident of the rebuilding of the house of God. Okay, and this is in uh, um, <coughs> the time of uh, Ezra, Haggai, Zechariah. Uh, the details are there in that section. I'm not going to go through everything. But uh, what we observe is that there was a 16-year period uh, or a 16-year delay for the rebuilding of the temple. And that could have discouraged the people a lot. Like 16 long years, they are trying to build, but it's not happening. And uh, you know, Zerubbabel was the, was the person in charge at that time. And um, you know, they, they would have wondered whether this is possible, whether Zerubbabel is the one who is going to build it. But it's beautiful that God worked through uh, prophetic people at that time. So you had people like uh, Zechariah and Haggai who were prophets. Okay? And you also had Ezra, uh, you know, uh, a person who was speaking of the law of, of God at that time. So these men were there and God was working through these men. And these prophets prophesied. Haggai and Zechariah, they prophesied. And uh, in one of the prophecies, Zechariah chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, this is what the Lord spoke to the people and to Zerubbabel. He said, so he answered and said to him, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. So this section, what it means is God is telling Zerubbabel that I'm going to help you. Not by power, nor by might. You may be thinking, you know, calculating, okay, how am I going to do? How many people is it going to take? How much time is it going to take? What are the resources? You do all that. But beyond that, not by power, nor by might, but my, by my spirit, says the Lord. Over and above, by the spirit of God, this temple is going to be rebuilt, Zerubbabel. You know, when you get a word like that in your spirit, so many things can go wrong, but that confidence that you carry, right, it will be like so amazing because faith is there in our spirit. We are so motivated. God is saying, I'll back you up. Then why should we worry? Isn't it? So that's the kind of word that came through Zechariah and God told that you are going to rebuild the temple. And by my spirit, 
I'm going to strengthen you to rebuild the temple. And he also says, who are you, O great mountain? Meaning, talking to the obstacle, which was before Zerubbabel and the people. And he says, uh, with shouts of grace, grace to it. So it simply uh, falls in the category of what we spoke yesterday, right? Speak the word. So if you see a mountain, shouts of grace or like God is with me. I will not be afraid. God is on my side. Speak of the grace of God, which is on your life, which is working for you. And as you speak to the mountain, the mountain will be uprooted. But how did Zerubbabel get that strength? How did the people get that strength? Because it's a quite a depressing time, right? You're trying to build 16 years is not a short time. But in that uh, difficulty, it was the prophetic word. So same thing for us, motivation, strength. Sometimes we may have nothing to hold on to except the scriptures, the word of God and a prophetic word. Right? And a prophetic word. So I'll just tell you one small thing. Uh, I'm trying to refrain as much as possible from uh, sharing stories. But just a quick thing and I can't forget it. So what happened is um, for I, I had applied for a course uh, to study my master's program. And when I applied for that course, um, things were all so challenging. Like um, uh, the uh, there were many issues. There were many issues. One particular thing didn't work out. And that had to come for the letter to be released. And the letter has to go here and this and that. So it was a very crazy time. Uh, but at that time, there was a there was a prophetic conference, and uh, we we went for it. It was organized by APC only, and there was a pretty well known prophet of God who had come. And after the teaching session, uh, they opened it up and they said, uh, "You all can come for prayer." So this is about uh, 10, 15 days before you know I have to go to study, and the visa has not come. So I was in a very bad state. Like nothing is ready unless you have uh, the confirmation, right? And so, uh, I mean, not that I was saying, oh, I need a prophetic word or anything, but I was desiring it and saying, it would be nice, God, if you spoke to me because uh, I feel like I'm stuck uh, and I don't know how I'm going to do this. So we all stood in line and, you know, that person was laying hands on everyone, praying, praying, praying. So when it came to me, he just started saying, when you go, and then, uh, you know, the place's name, when you go there, you're going to meet this person, you're going to do this. I'm like, excuse me, <laughs> I've not got the visa. And you're telling me when you go there, you are going to meet so and so, you are going to do this, and that is going to happen, and this is going to. I was shocked because, like, for me also, uh, those kind of very, very direct, like, hard hitting prophecies I hadn't heard personally. I came out thinking, what is he saying, you know? And it th the, every day got harder because the visa was not coming through. And you're going closer and closer and closer to the um, to the date of travel. I had already bought the ticket. So it, it was really crazy. It was already uh, crazy. But I had great confidence in my spirit because they, the God had spoken of the things I'm going to do when I go there. So I, I just held on to it. I wrote it down and I kept praying and I said, like, Lord, you said I'm going. So I know I'm going. Nothing can stop. And then beautifully, miraculously, things just unfolded. Like one day this came, one day that came. Uh, I, all the finances came through. And I, when I was sitting on the plane, I'm thinking, like, is it really happening? <laughs> Am I really going? I have to pitch myself. Am I dreaming? Am I alive? You know? But it actually happened. So uh, I, I'm just trying to say that, you know, sometimes the the encouraging thing is that word that God just speaks to you, to your spirit. And you're like, but how? But it will happen. You've got to hold on to it. You've got to pray it through. And, you know, God really works through that prophetic word. And it usually comes at a time when God knows you are going to face a lot of delays and uh, difficulties. He knows you need that word that will confirm uh, things to your spirit. So it's very motivating, strengthening to have a prophetic uh, word. And I really thank God for people who are pursuing the prophetic and who are moving at that level, 
you know what i mean uh, uh it we we are also moving in the prophetic but then we have got to desire more like imagine if that day that individual was not able to speak what he spoke if he had just said god is going to bless you i know that's nice it's it's helpful but the details right like this and that and everything it was amazing i was like whoa this is too much <laughs> so we can desire there's so much more uh, that we can desire right as far as the prophetic is concerned so there's strength there's motivation now let's go on next the prophetic word releases god's power so uh, let's take for example maybe under the category of the prophetic remember i told us there are many gifts that operate it's not just prophecy word of knowledge word of wisdom discerning of spirits so when there is a prophetic word just through the word the power can be released that also happens okay so that's the next important thing so when we speak the prophetic word we may think what is the use i'm just uh, telling them something but actually god's power gets released through the prophetic word okay uh, and that is something we've got to recognize god confirms that word god performs that word isaiah 44 and verse 26 it says god confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers so once we have released the word god will make it happen okay so that is another confidence that we must have you know sometimes some words come to us and we we speak it out we say uh, yeah right now there is no job opening for you but uh, i can see that uh, god is uh, god is opening that door for you okay and then we go back and we get scared we're like what did i say that guy has never got a job like in 6 months uh, and now if he doesn't get they'll think that i'm a false prophet right so we go and worry about what the word that we have spoken but here's the point when we are sincere and when it's a genuine word of god we should not we don't have to be afraid because it is god's word and what does isaiah 44 say it says god performs the counsel of his messengers okay and he confirms the word of his servant so we spoke it but whose responsibility is it to fulfill god's of course every prophetic word is conditional but god takes charge personally to make it happen in that person's life so we can be bold and confident i didn't say that god said it god will do it i don't have to be afraid right so we trust god for the power of god to be released and uh, when it comes to some of those other gifts like word of knowledge sometimes uh, people call out i i sense that there are uh, people here with with uh, skin conditions god is healing you right now okay and we wonder like how can we are just calling it out right how can that bring healing but the word the prophetic word itself the release of the word itself releases power okay and things happen so just because uh, we uh, we cannot understand it we should not limit god sometimes we may just call it out you just say um our eyes are being healed uh, there's an elbow uh, with pain whatever we are sensing god is healing you right now what what is you know the uh, dynamics of that all by faith right all by faith when we speak it it's happening you got it and then we hear of so many testimonies you call this out and uh, it was me i just got healed you know i got healed my my pain left uh, i i wasn't able to bend now i'm able because the power of god accompanies the word it's not light 
the word that we speak, the prophetic word. So we can be so bold in releasing that prophetic word and God will perform it. God will confirm it. God will do it. Okay. So that's the faith we have when we uh, release prophetic words. Then prophetic word uh, also brings correction and restoration. So which is a good example of uh, correction? I think we mentioned it earlier. Ah, uh, David. David was corrected with through Nathan. Yeah, Nathan. Uh, and uh, we know that David thought nobody knows. Okay, but the matter was so serious that God couldn't let that be, and so He had to speak to a prophet, and the prophet had to go and bring correction to David. But the beautiful thing is, it led to restoration. Right? Uh, thank God for David's response. If he had been like, who are you to tell me? I am the king. You know, I'll do whatever I want to do. Then there's no change. There's no question of restoration. But David repented. He didn't cover up. So that's that's the wonderful part. Uh, scriptures say, I don't know which uh, psalm or proverb it is, but with uh, humility comes honor. Okay, so he humbled himself. He said, "Yeah, I did wrong. I'm sorry. I did wrong." And uh, when he admitted that, uh, God restored him. God preserved him. The promises that God gave him: "You will have a descendant on the throne always." That stayed. God didn't change that because he was a man after God's own heart. Okay, and we also read Psalm 51, the Psalm of repentance that he writes, he says, God, restore to me, uh, you know, a, a correct, a right spirit. Uh, and uh, he takes up the word of God. He responds to it. And that's that's the beauty of it. So there are times that God can bring correction into our lives. Or we may speak correction. Um, but see, you, this part of bringing correction is a little um, sensitive. OK, not that. Through simple gift of prophecy, correction will not come. It's not like that. It may come, but how we take it forward, we have to be very wise and sensitive in that. Okay, so that's the only point. We'll come to it later. Now let's move on. Um, the prophetic word causes conviction, repentance, and turning to God. We observe this in First Corinthians chapter fourteen. Can someone read the passage? Uh, you can read verse twenty-four and twenty-five, please. But if all prophecy and an unbeliever or an unformed person comes in, he is convinced by all; he is convicted by all, and thus the secrets of his heart are revealed and so falling down on his face he will worship god and report that god is truly among you yes thank you uh, francis this is talking about the operation of the gifts of the spirit among believers and uh, paul is saying if there is the gift of prophecy if we speak in tongues Unbeliever cannot understand because tongues is a language that we speak with God, an unknown language that we speak with God, which requires interpretation. So in this passage, he also talks about that. If there is a message in tongues, it must be interpreted into uh, an understandable language. But if there is prophecy, okay, then an unbeliever, or he uses the term here, uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all, he is convicted by all, and thus the secrets of his heart are revealed. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. Okay. So think about the experience of an unbeliever who walks into our church. If we have prophesying believers, somebody goes up to him and says, uh, hey, I haven't seen you here. Is it your first time? They'll say, yeah, it's my first time. Uh, and then before the service gets over, uh, maybe they are talking casually, getting to know each other. And 
uh, this one guy uh, from the church says, can I pray for you? Uh, and uh, this newcomer says, yeah, sure. And the believer prays, right? And when he prays, maybe he's prophesying. He's saying all kinds of things. Recently, this has happened. And uh, God's, God uh, has seen it. And uh, God is uh, bringing this restoration. And uh, Unbeliever is shocked. He's like, you don't know me. I'm meeting you for the first time. And you're saying all these things that are comforting my heart. Because what does uh, prophecy do? Edification, exhortation, comfort. So he's feeling so comforted. And he says, it has only got to be God. Nobody else can know these things except God. And you're speaking of God. So it brings conviction. And what might happen? This person might actually turn to God. Because God is real. And God knows everything. So he might say, I want to accept Christ. I want to become a believer also. So it brings conviction among the people when we prophesy when there's a genuine word of prophecy another good example is the samaritan woman you remember jo uh, in john chapter 4 jesus speaks to this lady and uh, basically they are having this conversation and jesus asks her uh, give me a drink of water right and then she starts talking about her personal life and um, she finally says, she says, I have no husband. Then Jesus says, you have well said, I have no husband because you've had, you've had five husbands and the one whom you are, you have now is not your husband. What is, what is that? What is that gift? The gift, which, which of the nine gifts is this? Jesus is operating in the prophetic. But which gift is this? He's talking about her past. Gift of the Spirit. There are only three or four to take a guess from. You can just guess. Correct. Word of knowledge. Piece of information about her past. Isn't it? Word of knowledge. You've already had. She doesn't know Jesus. Uh, she's seeing him for the first time. And here's a man. He's telling her about her past. Her whole, you know, like some major aspect of her life. It's shocking. So then what is her response? The woman says, I perceive that you are a prophet. Okay, you're a man who has come from God. You're hearing from God. And then later on we see she goes to the whole, uh, she goes to the town and uh, all the people and she says, uh, you know, uh, please come. I, I've met somebody who told me everything about me, which is actually not true. Jesus didn't tell everything about her. But, but <coughs> sorry, she was so convicted that... Uh, like, you know, that her life has to be different and that Christ is here, that she started proclaiming about Jesus. Okay, so that's the beauty of it. We may wonder what a prophetic word can do, but a prophetic, prophetic word can do a lot, especially for unbelievers. So uh, operating in the prophetic, right, can touch their hearts. Uh, it can really wake them up to see that there is a God. They'll be so amazed right, at the existence of a, a God and a God who loves them. There's so much more that we can actually talk about it. Um, I've also seen some, uh, been part of some, some uh, maybe fellowships or meetings and even seen, right, like uh, uh, some programs online where the prophetic gift is operating so powerfully and people are just calling out stuff and you're like, oh my goodness, how do they know? Like even up till uh, I have seen, I don't know how true this is because I saw it online because it's so far away. We don't know whether what they're doing is right or wrong. But uh, things like phone numbers, things like bank account numbers, right? Uh, crazy stuff like that. Uh, but I know it's possible. Now, whether people who are doing it 
out there are genuine that i don't know uh, but is it possible it is possible okay date of birth it's possible why not yeah see uh, whatever gets someone's attention we don't know right what might get their attention see for example jesus he sees uh, nathaniel right under a fig tree isn't it uh, i i hope i'm correct he says i saw you under the fig tree for well, what what is that uh, small detail for how does it help why is jesus even saying that i saw you under the fig tree he could just directly start talking to nathaniel but you see the way no but the but the point i'm making is maybe it was significant for nathaniel to know that jesus saw him under the fig tree okay for us it's insignificant what is this detail you uh, when you were praying uh, you you were uh, reading this passage it's important for that person or something else you were wearing a green uh, whatever green shawl for us it may sound silly but for that person it might mean the world so in the same way if someone calls out a date of birth or a number or a car number or a whatever number maybe it hits them i don't know so it's not wrong it's not wrong it's not bad um but it's got to be genuine that's the main thing <laughs> okay you don't seem uh, happy or in agreement at all but i have to move on let's go okay next section yeah <laughs> yeah huh. yeah 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 you're right <laughs> yeah god would do anything illegal correct so um very interesting <laughs> yeah but calling out a number uh, i in one instance when they called out the number they they said part of the numbers they left out one or two numbers so i felt like that was quite smart of the person who was ministering similarly the bank account thing also when they called out they just left out two three numbers here and there okay so it's just to get that person's attention so when when i saw that i was like okay fine i can understand uh, they are really trying to minister uh, or uh, one particular person i've seen he just goes on like uh, okay this uh, uh, and then he call out a name and they'll be their husband and then he'll call out three names they'll be they'll be the names of those three children like he's a traveling minister it's very tough for him to know so many names so many uh, things but a lot of people have kind of uh, affirmed that he's very genuine as well uh, but the point is see whether people are genuine or not the power and the gift is genuine it can it can operate to any extent okay it's yeah go ahead Uh, correct to to reveal the personals and i've seen many testimonies on this uh, people just calling their uh, names and they are telling the personals in front of uh, thousands of people and after that on that time the person who who they call they'll come and they'll accept that they are and after that if you see the uh, future life of them it will be very difficult for us that everyone know things and how come how come god do that because he know everything right he know of future also what will happen yeah yeah correct so uh, you're right uh, anand in the way the word is released the prophet or the prophesying believer has to employ wisdom okay because it's about building up the person now think about nathan and david okay nathan could have gone and told the whole world or oh, david is a sinner david is... but that was not the point the way he dealt with it was so beautiful that he went he didn't even say directly he came up with a story and so that's the way unfortunately does god reveal can god reveal these personal things secret things he can he does to help people see thank god 
David's sin came out at the right time. If he continued in sin, he can't have the blessing of God, isn't it? So uh, that way, God has to deal with the sin. So God does reveal, okay? But the ball is in the prophet's court or the prophesying believer's court. We'll, when we talk about practical things about prophesying, we'll talk about this also. So usually what we say, if it's a word of correction, don't bring it out in public. Don't ever bring it out in public. Unless the person has been unrepentant of it, after talking, you know, many times, the Bible also says, then later, in, publicly you rebuke. Okay. But a word of correction, by default, has to be brought out only in private. So it's sad that people are calling it out on stage. You shouldn't do that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay. So in the last... Uh, section here it says the prophetic word transforms nations mm, this scripture passage jeremiah 1 verses 9 and 10 it's very powerful uh, i want to request uh, somebody from the online batch to read it please jeremiah 1 verses 9 and 10 Anyone? Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Shiv Kumar. As we see here, God's word in our mouth. Okay, God says to Jeremiah, the prophet, I put my words in your mouth. What is prophecy? It's actually that. What he's saying, what is on his heart, on his mind, he puts it on our hearts. So his word on our in our mouth and when we release the word we are speaking the word we are told that the word um, in the case of jeremiah says i have i have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms so the prophetic word personal We've discussed about it so much. But there can also be words that go forth for the nations. We are prophesying over regions, over countries, uh, you know, over uh, uh, communities. Uh, and usually that happens through somebody who's in the office of a prophet. They call out and they say, okay, India, this is what the Lord says, and this and that and something and something. And it just goes on, right? So the prophetic word which is on God's heart. How is it powerful in what God did through Jeremiah? God is telling him, look, the word that you speak as a prophet, it will do a work. Okay, It will do a deep work. What is that work? To root out and to pull down. So as the prophetic word is spoken over a region, something is being destroyed. You could say, you know, the demonic kingdom, the strongholds, um, uh, all the plots, the schemes of the devil, they are being destroyed. So it's literally warfare. The word is coming out and it's destroying the works of the enemy. Maybe the enemy has uh, caused different things like crimes and corruption and all forms of evil to take place. But when by the spirit of God, somebody is prophesying, the, that word will go and tear down, pull out. So powerful, isn't it? 
very powerful. We think what is there, we are just saying something that God is teaching us or putting on our hearts, but there's more to it. Prophetic word carries power with it. So it goes and it roots out, it pulls down, it destroys, it throws down. You see, so much damage to the kingdom of darkness. And understandable why Satan doesn't want us to uh, know the value of prophecy or uh, wants us to dislike prophecy, you know, because of the things that have happened sometimes, we may take this position and say, no, I don't believe anymore. It makes it easier for Satan. Whereas, yes, there could have been abuses of a genuine gift, but the gift is genuine. Power of God is released through the prophetic word, especially to the nations, right? So imagine this, just the word comes and it's doing so much work. Root out, pull down, uh, destroy, throw down. The works of darkness are just being crushed through that prophetic word, right? So we've got to, we've got to give it voice. Somebody has to give it voice. Okay, so that is the uh, destroying of the demonic realm or the demonic uh, strongholds. Now, on the other hand, it says build and plant, build and plant. So when, let's say, a prophet says, you know, maybe a nation is, is come under threat um, and uh, they don't have any hope that they will survive as a people or a community. But God says, you know, you have a future. God says, I'm going to raise up leaders. God says, I will, you know, bring in favor. I will bring in resources. I will open up doors, breakthroughs, miracles. What exactly is happening? In the spiritual realm, things that were destroyed are being rebuilt. Some things that don't exist are being planted. Right? Uh, so there's so much of spiritual dynamics because the power is going forth through the prophetic word. So even to transform nations, we need those who are prophesying. Got to prophesy to the nation, prophesy to the people. Think about Ezekiel. You remember Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37? We usually talk about that passage. You find that there is a great army but it's all destroyed. It's just dry bones. Bones is bad enough. Dry bones. Okay. That means they've been like this for a long time. No hope. Okay. Completely hopeless. But what does God tell Ezekiel? Prophesy. Prophesy to the dry bones that they will become an army for the Lord. So then Ezekiel prophesies. When he prophesies that, that, that those bones are now transformed into an army of God full of flesh. So imagine that. That's the power of the prophetic word. God will do the work. His power will do the work. What, what is our responsibility? Hear clearly from God. Evaluate whether that is a genuine word. Speak it properly, speak it at the right time, speak it in the right way. That much is our responsibility. Now that word has to happen, that is in, that's God's work. He will perform his word. Remember? And we, what did we also say? Isaiah 44, we said he does the counsel. He confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers. So uh, even when someone comes to us and they say, remember, you said uh, this, uh, it's actually happened. Okay. We can just thank God with this scripture, Isaiah 44. Thank you, Lord. Uh, you confirm the word of your servant. You perform the counsel of your messengers. That word is fulfilled. We need not take any pride in it. Yeah, of course, we are, we are thrilled and happy. But we can thank God with the scripture, Isaiah 44, and say, God, you spoke and you confirm your word, you perform your counsel through your people. Praise be to your name. Okay, so uh, that's about what the prophetic word does and the outcomes of the prophetic word. The last part here is prophetic word in warfare. This Paul taught Timothy. So in 1 Timothy 1 verse 18, he says, 
this charge i commit to you san timothy according to the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you may wage the good warfare so remember we talked about at uh, times when there are delays and challenges at that time we can pull out the prophetic word and say say god you said you are going to do this in my life lord you said so when you start doing that according to what uh, paul is telling timothy we are waging warfare okay it's spiritual warfare to pull out the prophecies and start declaring it so that is also something that we can do uh, with the prophetic word okay so that is the content for today and if there are any questions we can uh, take it up if not we can pray and close like uh so prophecy we can prophesy but doing is god but it's depend upon the people faith also ma'am like if god also want to work people don't have faith on that and people not working on that so how it will be effective yeah so you are right there is a need for faith so, and that's why uh, francis usually we first speak the word in most of uh, our services that's how we do it we we speak the word we or in churches where they flow in the prophetic they talk a lot about the prophetic we can school this and that to build a certain level of faith then it's easier to prophesy uh, but sometimes you know god can it's it's a uh, what do you say it's an exception sometimes even when there is no faith uh, prophecy can come so like uh, jesus and the samaritan woman she didn't even know he's jesus she was not even expecting any prophecy but it can happen so sometimes it works like that even if people don't have faith because god is so gracious he'll still give a word in those moments mm. now in the section prophetic word releases power like we uh, we discuss like uh, when in the seasons of when we are so low and all we can uh, we can expect the god and also for uh, person who prophesied we can say like uh, like i like it's me who spoke and lord you will make it to pass but uh, before we also said like uh, when we say word of prophecy it's not about accuracy so how uh, what if what we spoke and it's not fulfilled in their lives like especially there we were talking about like in this uh, sometimes we may say like you gave the example of a believer who don't have a job for a long time and like we say you will get a job and then we get worried what if he won't get a job and then we told like if god spoke it he will do it but sometimes it's not about accuracy then what if it won't get to pass how we can deal with it or how that person can deal with it personal prophecy is conditional that we know okay um maybe i could have used another example which does not involve personal prophecy uh so let's say you know god is going to do something in this nation and then he says that okay and uh, uh that doesn't depend so much on what the people people's response now that kind of a word yeah we don't have to worry at all it's unconditional it will happen uh and uh, i just want to correct that we are not saying that prophecy is not about accuracy what we are saying is more than accuracy the test of a genuine prophecy is whether it is drawing us to god or not so more than accuracy accuracy is also needed it it is also needed okay all right then uh, i think we've reached the end of the class let's pray and uh, we can close somebody from here francis could you please pray hello father thank you for this wonderful time lord thank you for this wonderful morning thank you for you and the wonderful day lord help us lord thank you for you help the ma'am to teach uh, regarding prophetic and prophetic ministry lord thank you for your giving the keep promises and you are keeping that 
achieve your surrender in your life coming classes you are giving to your hand in jesus we are asking amen thank you thank you everyone god bless